So Connor Hughes back in the PFL Europe for a second time round. Um, before we get into talking about this season coming up, let's go back to talk about that last season um, because a lot of people, you know, were expecting that you were going to be one of the guys that was going to progress into the later stages. And whilst I think that, you know, to give Dylan Tuke his credit, you know, I don't think a lot of people saw him come in and he ended up being, you know, one of the stars of the tournament last year. And your guys' yeah. fight was, I think, one of the better matchups that we ended up having throughout the tournament. But of course, your first pro loss and then to, to build on that and to, to go from there, how, how difficult was that initially to, you know, that there's kind of the tough nature of these PFL tournaments is, you know, if you if you're advancing to the later stages you're staying active throughout the year and, and you've got that constantly on your mind but then having that and having that setback how difficult was it then to to kind of get the motivation to just get back in there and, and go back to preparing for the next thing that came your way yeah well me being me mate I, I wanted to get in there straight away like there was there was talks of me possibly doing Paris straight after obviously just on the card not like a part of the tournament but mm. I wanted to get straight back in. To be honest, it was probably a good idea I didn't. Um, but yeah, like I'm one of them. I don't really... For me to come back from something like that would be to come back and, and win and put on a, a good performance. But um, obviously taking the loss wasn't part of the plan. fully believed that, that I was going to win the tournament myself. But um, at the same time, I've learned massively from from the two clocks and I just think it's kind of uh, it's not just opened my eyes to certain things it's also it's also helped with my team's progression as well so uh, I think I think to be honest as shit as it was at the time meet I needed it to be honest so just one of them you said about you know wanting to get back in there and how maybe you know it was a, for the best that you didn't end up getting uh, that that Paris card like your schedule over the last couple of years has been insane, right? Like I, I didn't even <laughs> notice until um until that fight with you came around how often you had fought, right? To rack up that many fights in, in such a short amount of time. I'm sure that, you know, whilst you would have liked to have gone out there and, and just, you know, it's one of those things that MMA fighters talk about all the time, how it's not like football where you lose and you play again next week. You know, you want to get back out there and 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 change that as quick as possible. But having that time off uh, to being able to, you know, make some adjustments, like you said, and and then, you know, you did still manage to get a fight in at the end of the year, which I think was, was very um, beneficial. And then obviously it kind of sets you up perfectly to come back into the tournament and, and stuff like that. Like, would you have been, would you have been disappointed to have not got another fight in last year? Because I imagine fighting and going out um, in the first stage of a tournament and then not fighting until the next tournament. Like I said, it's kind yeah. of the brutal nature of these tournament formats where you can kind of find yourself uh, just waiting for the schedule to kick back ahead, like again in the next year yeah I mean, yeah it was a uh, uh, me like as you said like i'm active you know what i mean like, this is my this is my 10th pro fight in just over two and a half years which is kind of like unheard of really yeah. i think most people have on average like at most three fights a year and i'm on my 10th in two and a half so um don't get me wrong like I wanted to be active. I've always, throughout my whole martial arts journey as a whole, I've always been active. But um, I, I, I don't think I could. I, I'd have went insane if I had a fourth in December last year. To be honest, especially after the two fight, because it weren't just a loss with two. It was the performance. It, like the performance weren't there. It weren't for me anyway. It weren't like my standard of performance. So not only was it to get the win back, but it was also like. I'd just been signed to a major promotion and I'd not shown me or what I can do. So um yeah, it was it was mad important to me to like you know, one one to face loss, shake off the cobwebs and, and get back to it. But um obviously now I'm back in the tournament, we're in the we're in a better position. And I've already I've got me win on the big stage. So now it's just about carrying on that momentum and and taking out every opponent one by one. I mean, you talk about that win on the big stage. Uh, I don't know what it is that you did in that time after the, the two fight, but it certainly looked like uh, it worked out in your favour because um, that performance, I, I 
can't imagine you could have asked for much more in terms of, you know, saying, get me in this tournament the second time round because th- the same thing, history is not going to repeat itself. That performance yeah. kind of said it all. Like, I, I went back and watched it the other day and I, I'd forgotten how the fight ended um, and I didn't have the commentary on and I had to rewind it a couple of times at the end of the fight because I was like, what? What just happened there? But <laughs> was it a, was it a weird one for you? Because it, it felt like the arena kind of like well, you know, you get it sometimes. It happens a lot where a finish happens right at the end of the round, and the the, the crowd just think, oh, it's the end of the round, and then suddenly, you know, your hands are going up, and the crowd are like, oh, wait, it's the end of the fight. He's yeah. gone. Like it was like I mean, a delayed, it was like a delayed football celebration with VAR. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even, I didn't even know. Like, I obviously <laughs> he was he was attacking my legs a lot, so I just started. I heard the 10 second clap ago. So I just started throwing, I'd been landing body shots throughout the fight anyway. Um, so I just started throwing more body shots and thought, I'm not going to let you rest for the, for the 10 seconds here. Get up, walk back to my corner. And I just think it's the end of the round. I'm getting ready to go up to round three. And then one of my cornermen points and goes, Connor, it's done. And then I turn and see the ref waving it off. And obviously, like, the win and relief feeling came over me and stuff. But um, yeah, it was confusing. Like, I think with Sebastian, I think after the head kick I landed in the first round, I think from there it was, you kind of wanted out a little bit, you know what I mean? I wasn't, the whole plan was for the first round to just basically not be there when he wants me there. He he was a jiu-jitsu guy, he obviously wanted to take down and stuff, so it was just to, to sting him from range, um, beat him when, be, be not don't be there when he wants me there and, and capitalise on the mistakes he makes, but um, you know, tricky, tricky, tricky kid to be honest. Like, he messed my leg up really. If I'm honest, like in the end of the first round, he knee buckled and stuff. So, um, but yeah, it was a good fight for me. It was a good fight to get back to winning ways and good fight to start this tournament. One of the things that, again, from rewatching it, that really stuck with me is, is afterwards. Obviously, they're they're talking to you in the cage about what you want to do from here. And uh, I, I believe the last thing that you say before leaving the cage, you pointed at Dan Hardy and said, "You know, like yeah. uh, obviously, you know, the PFL Europe has been um, super interesting to watch because it was the first season, and so we don't really have a a precedent of knowing what happens." to the people who win, what happens to the people who lose, what who goes back in and who doesn't and things like that. And you got the Bellator deal and stuff, which adds mm-hmm. a, another level of confusion as to how this is all going to play out. Like, was there ever any doubt in your head that you weren't going to be in the tournament this second time around? No, I, I knew and, and, you know, like I I spoke to Dan all through the week and stuff and uh, like every time I see Dan, I tell him like, well, I did in Dublin anyway, I was saying like you, you know I belong in this uh, in this tournament, so you know I'm gonna win it. So um no, there was no doubt about it. Lucky told me you, you get a win here, you get a good performance, and we'll put you in again next year. They, like they want me in just as much as I want to be in, and and um I think I think as well as obviously the type of fighter that I bring, like I'm not a boring fighter. I don't look to stall. I don't look to keep you against the fence and, and make it boring. Like I'm in exciting fights. Like if you look at all of my nine fights, they're all reasonably exciting. Seven of them get finished. Um and I think also they know that like I've been a pro for two and a half years and I'm moving as quick as I am. You know what I mean? So um look for me, it was the as soon as I started MMA, it was a matter of time. I had to I had to work hard, get better, become a mixed martial artist, not just a striker. And I always kind of knew deep down that like when I do make the move to MMA and I do start fighting, it's gonna go from the bottom to the top instantly. And and that's what's kind of happening. Um I'm just I'm in a good position. You know what I mean? I'm in a good position. I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm fit, I'm active, and you know, like looking at this tournament, it's it's wide open for me to take, and and I'm, and I've said this last year, but you know, I've took the loss, I've learned the lessons, and I've just grown a lot. You know what I mean? I've grown mentally, I've grown physically, um, and I just I just think it's going to be a complete different story this this year round. 
what did you make of the the way that the tournament played out in the end? Obviously, looking around, looking to to do it the second time of asking, but uh, now that we've had that first season done and dusted, you know, fans kind of know what to expect. But from your perspective uh, of watching it play out um, and, and with an eye to being in it the second time of asking, what was your kind of overall takeaways from watching it all? You know what, like. Obviously, at first, I thought I believed I was going to win. Um, the loss came, and and I thought like, well, Suk's going to win. It, to be honest, that that was my that was my thought. I thought Suk's going to going to take this and and um, and then go off and do his thing. But uh, I don't think, to be honest, I don't think anybody kind of saw Jakob coming in and winning. He was kind of like the dark horse of the tournament a little bit. Uh, you know, then you obviously had like the likes of John Mitchell. Cheers of uh, all of them. Cheers of who's obviously in it again. Um, like it was pretty much all up for grabs, to be honest. If 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 I'm being real, like and looking at looking at Jakob, he obviously he fought well. You know what I mean. He, he got the job done in every fight, and but again, like I don't I don't look. I don't look at him now as a champion and be like, oh, the kid's untouchable. Like, him and Tuk, I thought Tuk was winning. And then Tuk had, uh, you said to me, glycogen issues or whatever, but Tuk, Tuk started to get tired and then obviously Yaku managed to pick it up. I was watching that fight and if Tuk weren't as tired as he was or had similar striking to me, I do feel... If it was me in there, I'd have put him away. Stylistically, I just think that fight is is perfect for me, if I'm honest. And I think that's if Kane doesn't get through him, I think that's what you're going to see in the final, me and Jakob. That's an exciting prospect to think about, man. I think that fight would be fantastic. I mean, a, a mm. lot of obviously great matchups that we've got to look forward to. But first one for you is taking on Anatoly Bal. Um, what do you know about this guy going in? And also, you know, after not getting a spot on that Paris card, I'm sure that, you know, I know that you wanted to fight anyway, but I'm sure after watching that event at home, you would have been like, ah, of all the ones to miss out on that one. But, uh, you know, yeah. PFL Europe 1 kicking yeah. things off in Paris should be an absolute banger of a card to uh, to kick off the tournament. So I'm sure you're excited about that as well. Yeah, I mean, Paris, like I said, I was watching in the, the, the crowd is, is unreal. Yeah. Um, just seeing the crowd and, and, and the atmosphere and that is like I was I was gutted I went a part of it, but then obviously they announced we're going to Paris straight away, so I'm so I'm buzzing. This time like twenty thousand people, you know what I mean? Like that in itself is like a dream come true. Like twenty thousand sold out arena is is ridiculous. So um as for the opponents, you know, he's he's well experienced, he's well rounded. Um his main thing for me is he's he he's pretty tough. He's pretty durable. Like looking at some of his fights, he gets cracked, he gets hurt, but he still manages to stay in the fight. Doesn't win everyone, but he manages to stay in there. Um, good fight for me again. Obviously, we both fought Sebastian. I fought him in December. He fought Sebastian in July in Berlin. Um, looking at that fight, he gets the finish in the second. But I feel like Sebastian had way more. Way more success with him. Um, had him in a few tricky spots, took his back, got him in a in a triangle, caused him in an armbar. Had his moments, uh, which which me going into the Sebastian fight, we watched that and and took a lot from it really. So it'll be interesting. I think he's obviously got his pros, the the uh, the experience, and and obviously been around the game for a while, but. He makes for 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 the time he's been a pro. He makes a lot of mistakes. He's inactive, and he leaves himself open a lot. Now the type of fighter that he is, heavy pressure comes forward, uh, wants to throw his hands. I'm just gonna set traps for him. I'm gonna set traps for him that I know he's gonna bite to. And I think as soon as I'm gonna, as soon as he starts biting on them, I'm gonna put him away. I mean. I'm excited for this this card. You know, as soon as they announced it was Paris, I was like, "Well, now I'm even more excited because you know yeah, that it's gonna yeah. be it's gonna be wicked, no matter what happens." So yeah. I'm excited for this, and and also 
the I love the narratives that you get in the PFL because of the tournament format, right? Of course, you know, like I said, a lot of people looking at you as a guy that is going to go far in the PFL. And so to have that setback last year, but then the beautiful thing with the PFL, this isn't a one-off tournament. It comes around again and again. So again, get the opportunity to, to make it right uh, and, and also, you know, <laughs> face some different guys as well, of course. And yeah. uh it should be super interesting, man. So, yeah, uh, super excited for this one. And uh, I appreciate your time and excited to watch you go out there and, and do your thing in Paris, man. Because, like I said, this card should be should be fantastic. So, Yeah, excited, mate. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to steal the show, I'm telling you. Yeah, let's do it, man. Let's do it. All right. I appreciate yeah, your time, man. man. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks and, a lot, uh, We'll catch up with you later. Yeah, man. See you soon. No worries. See you later.